last week regarding the scripture readings um, in Isaiah and Ezekiel, but particularly Ezekiel. Um, and then a question, something I said about Jesus coming to undo everything Satan had done and that Jesus had to be obedient because it was the exact opposite of Satan's disobedience. So today I'm going to take just a few minutes, probably about 10, 15 minutes, and hopefully to bring you up to, um, to better understanding of what I was saying and what, uh, what the Bible has been telling us, particularly in Ezekiel. Ezekiel can be a, a difficult look, if you will, because um, in Ezekiel 28, starting at verse 11, 11 through 17, um, the writer, is talking about, he starts by saying King Tyre. Now, King Tyre was a real human being. He was a horrible person. Um, he ruled over a nation of people who were warlike. Um, they, and so he starts off by saying that, mm, I got my Bible here. He starts off by saying that um, the word of God came to me, son of man, take up a lament concerning the king of Tyre. So the king of Tyre was a real person. But then when you go on and read more, uh, you realize that he's not talking about a human being. He's talking about Lucifer. And Lucifer was Satan's name before he fell uh, from the grace of God, before he took a third of the angels and mounted a war against God in the heavenly realm because he wanted to take God's place. He wanted to be above God. Um, Lucifer was a cherubim um, and cherubims guarded the throne of God. So he had a very special place in the kingdom of God. Not only did he have a special place, but he himself was special. So verse um, verse 12 says, you were the model of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Now they're talking, the writer is talking about Lucifer. So he is saying you were the model of perfection. So God had created him in perfection. He was perfect and he was the model of, he was in perfect beauty, perfect beauty. So he was not only he was not only a spe in a special place, but he was beautiful. And then he goes on in verse thirteen: "You were in the Garden of Eden, of God, which means because he was full of wisdom. So wisdom was in the Garden of Eden. He was in the Garden of Eden when God created the Garden of Eden for um, Adam and Eve." Every precious stone adorned you. So not only was he beautiful, but he had ruby, topaz, emerald, crystalline, onyx, jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and beryl. They were all in him. His fittings, the things that the jewels go into, like the, the things that your, your, your diamonds and your, your stones go into, the fittings. It says, and mountains were made of gold. On the day of your you were created, they were prepared. So in other words, God prepared every little thing that was going to be about Lucifer. He was that important. He says, you were anointed. I'm on verse 14. You were anointed as a guardian cherub for, for, for so I ordained you. So God ordained him to cover God's holiness, that's what cherubs did, and to guard his throne. You were on the mount of God and you walked among the fiery stones. You were blameless in all your ways from the day you were created 
till wickedness was found in you. He was so perfect from verses 11 through 15. He was so perfect, or actually through 14. And then 15 says, wickedness was found in him. He became proud. And that's one of the reasons God hates a haughty or a proud spirit. Satan became proud. And by human standards, you understand that because by human standards, he was perfect. He was beautiful. Everything about him made him great and wonderful. And so he became proud and wanted to be more than what he was. Now, on the opposite side of that, Jesus came and became less than what he was. Jesus was God himself incarnate in flesh and he came to serve. First John 3, 8 says, the one who does what is sinful is of the devil. The devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the son of God appeared was to destroy the work, the devil's work. The reason the son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. So Jesus came to destroy all the work of Satan, that all the work Satan had done in the earth. Pride, sexual immorality, lies, deceit, envy, hate. Jesus came to destroy all of that. How do you destroy it? By being the opposite of it. So Jesus is love and mercy and grace. He is joy. He is um, contentment. Uh, he was. He is the opposite of everything Satan was. Satan wanted to exalt himself. Jesus diminished himself. So when I said Jesus came to do the opposite of everything Satan did, that's what I meant. He came to destroy the works of the devil, of Satan, and the only way to destroy the works of Satan is to be the complete opposite of Satan. That's why you and I show love when the world is showing hate. That's why we are content with everything God has given us rather than, rather than trying to strive in selfish ambition. Uh, that's why we wait on the Lord in our good courage and allow him to strengthen our hearts. And we wait we don't plan B God. We wait for him. We are the opposite of the world system. We are the opposite of sinners. We are the opposite. Y'all with me? Okay. So we get, we got that all that Lucifer was, but then he fell. Verse uh, 16, through your widespread trade, you were filled with violence and you sinned. So I drove you in disgrace from the Mount of God. Now, no human has been on the Mount of God. So you could not be talking to the, a human king of Tyre. He said, and I expelled you, O guardian cherub. So he is talking to the guardian cherub who was Lucifer, who we now call Satan. Oh, um, your heart became proud. This is verse 17. On account of your beauty and you corrupted your wisdom because of your splendor. So making him perfect, making him the guardian cherub, overseeing God's holiness and his throne caused Satan, Lucifer, to become proud and haughty and uplifted when really he had nothing to be proud of other than the fact God created him in his perfection. Um, so then he, then he goes on in verse 17. So I threw you to earth. I made you a speck, a speck, a speculator of you uh, before kings. So that is why we say he threw God threw Satan out of heaven and onto the earth. And he did not allow um, him to continue in his reign in heaven. 
He removed him. Why? Because Satan had decided that he was going to be greater than God. Mm -hmm. And that's the kind of stuff we do when God tells us to do one thing and we decide we're going to do something else or not do anything that we're supposed to do. I'm looking for one more scripture that just came up to me as I was sitting here reading this. It's the scripture in Matthew when Jesus says, I saw Satan be removed from heaven. Um, I don't see it. I don't see it right now, but I know it's in Matthew. And next week when we talk, I will uh, have it for you. So I hope we are clearer now um, on why I said Jesus came to undo all that Satan had done and how it is that Ezekiel was writing about uh, calling it the king of Tyre when really it was Satan, uh, Lucifer, that he was talking about. I hope this helps. So this is what I want you to do this week. I want you to uh, read 1 John, the third chapter, the whole third chapter, because I want you to put what I just put uh, on 3 John 8 into context. And you can't do that without reading it in its entirety. So read 1 John, third chapter. Read Isaiah 14, the whole chapter, so you can put 12 through 15 in context. Isaiah 14, and then Ezekiel 28, so you can put it in context. So 1 John 3, Isaiah 14, and Ezekiel 28. I want you guys to read that because we're going to start, uh, we're going to move forward in the book of John next week, but I want you guys to have a really good firm understanding of who Jesus is, well we have a firm understanding of who he is, why he came, not just to give us eternal life, but to destroy the work of the devil, not in general, but in us. Who, he, who he's trying to destroy the work of and why. God bless you. Remain steadfast and immovable in Christ. Remember to live above mediocrity and the joy of the Lord is your strength. God bless you.